So I am turning 44 this month, and to celebrate, I'm gonna give you 44 tips on what to do for buying a house. So, first one is getting your pre-approval done. Knowing your shopping budget and understanding how much you can afford is a massive, massive way to start your home buying journey. Now, the next one is all about your costs. If you're gonna have some costs involved, which you will, you need to know how much it's gonna be, how much is gonna move. What are those closing costs? What are all those expenses you need to have outside of your down payment? And the third one is all about understanding the market. Get some knowledge, understand, watch our videos if you're in Calgary about what's happening in the market because we give those and information like that just freely. So find that information for where you are living. Now the next thing is you're gonna wanna know who an agent is. So make sure you find a really great agent that you gel with, that you have a great rapport with because that makes the world of a difference when you're buying. Now the next thing you want to be doing is researching neighborhoods. So finding great neighborhoods that have great crime rates that are close to where you want to be living is really, really important. Now if you're in Calgary, jump up here because this is a list of all the neighborhoods that, you know, are good and bad, really. So this is going to help you if you are in Calgary. Now figuring out your commute time. Evaluate that commute. Because as you are driving around these neighborhoods, Get a sense of where things are at. How far are things away? Is how long is it gonna take during rush hour times? That is really, really important for you to know. And also looking at your needs and your wants. So make a list with each other. If there's more than one buyer, uh, look at what your needs and what your wants are. You have to compromise on something and what are those things you're willing to compromise and what are things you're just not willing to compromise on. And when you're looking at all of these neighborhoods, be flexible with locations because there might be areas that you didn't realize existed that could actually suit you better. So once you've found a handful of neighborhoods that you are falling in love with, find some open houses in those areas. Once you are able to get in, you can get a sense of what the neighborhood's like, what those homes are like, but the next tip is don't fall in love with the staging that is in those homes because it's not your stuff. They may have had someone professionally stage the property, which is great, but it kind of just helps you emotionally fall in love with it, but don't fall in love with the stuff. Check out the house itself. Make sure it's exactly what you're hoping for, as well as inspections. Have an inspection when you write an offer on a property. Have that inspector look at all of the mechanicals, all the structural things, as well as the windows. Look for energy efficient items that are important to you. And that could include things like chargers in your garage for electric cars, whatever that may be. The next thing, when you're in the property during an open house and you're kind of falling in love with the property, consider the resale value. You need to know how much this home is gonna hold its value compared to other properties that are similar to what you're looking at. So really consider that and ensure that that's something you're thinking about. And if you are thinking about it, consider new homes too, but make sure you have an agent with you so you are able to have the right representation and you have someone in your court because ultimately builders work for themselves. So once you've found a property you love, you're gonna wanna know about the repairs. You wanna ask about the repairs of what has been done recently and kind of what you need to do upcoming. Understand your property taxes, get into the numbers, know what they look like and find out exactly how much they are. You also want to look for the homeowners association. Is there a homeowners association that has fees? Maybe you're buying in a neighborhood that has lakes. Maybe you're buying in a neighborhood that doesn't have anything, but know that information for yourself. You also want to check around you for future developments because I mean, you don't want this to spring up behind you randomly one day and you didn't even know that it was there. So this is something really, really important to know what is happening with the future developments around your property. And once you know exactly the neighborhood that you're gonna be buying in, know those trends in that area. Dig into the stats, what is happening in that market because the tip before was all about the city. This is all about your neighborhood that you really wanna live in. So when you're shopping for your mortgage, you wanna get multiple quotes. Understand all of the options that you have available to you. 
You also do not want to be buying a property if you have a job probation. Because if you have a job probation, then that is really going to hinder exactly what it is that you can purchase. Now, understanding appraisals. Appraisals are so important in what happens as part of a property. And so understanding how the appraisal process works is gonna be really, really critical for you in knowing exactly what to do. Now, do you know the difference of deposit and down payment? Because if you don't, you want to understand that. That is something critical in knowing how the process works between deposits and down payments. And ultimately, as we're talking about costs, know the costs of this house. Before we were talking about general costs of moving, but now figure out maintenance fees. What is the cost of this property? Because that is really important as well. So you want to negotiate wisely. So make sure you have an agent that is working in your best interest and you're not like lowballing offers in a really competitive market. Know the market you're in. If the market is hot, then that's not gonna be the best situation for you. So know what the market is and negotiate wisely. You also wanna make sure that you are preparing for bidding wars because if it is a hotter market, hotter price point, then that is something that is really, really important for you to do. Be prepared for making sure you are gonna potentially walk into multiple offer situation. You also wanna make sure that you don't just trust the listing, pre-listing inspection because the pre-listing inspection itself, as good as it is and good information, it's not fully gonna give you all the information that you need to have. So make sure you have your own inspection done as well. You also wanna be really cautious about taking on new debt. So go getting a new car prior to closing on a property. That's a really bad idea. Do not take new debt before you uh, take on a new mortgage. Know your rights, talk to a lawyer. If there are things that you're concerned about, things that you're nervous about, well, make sure you talk to the lawyer because they're gonna help you understand exactly what is going on and what your rights are. And you really do not want to rush this process. There's no one's in a hurry. Take your time. I mean, I even bought a house in a hot market where there was lots of multiple offers. I just took my time, I found the right property, and well, we've got a property. So don't rush the process if you don't want to. Now, as exciting as this whole process has been, you want to avoid making really big emotional decisions. Because if you make an emotional decision, you might make the wrong decision. Now get advice from friends. Go out and talk to basically some of your friends that have actually purchased a property. Get some advice from them as well, because they might have a few things that they wish they did that you could do now. Now, once you have the house, talk to neighbors. This is one thing a lot of people don't talk about. And talking to neighbors can be really, really vital in understanding exactly what it is that what you're buying and who lives around it to see if you want to live there. Now, if you live in a neighborhood like this where there are lots of old trees, you will want to make sure you get a sewer scope. Inspect the sewer because if it falls on your property, that could be really, really expensive for you to fix in the future. Now, you also never, never, if you believe that you are able to add value to the property, make sure that you don't skip the ugly house. Find the ugly houses that are out there because that is something that you could add value to that not many people can and it could be really good for you. So you're gonna wanna check for flood zones. In an area like this in Calgary, this is in the flood zone. So you do not want to buy something is in an area that you do not want to be in because of a flood zone. You also want to check your roof. Make sure that the roof that you have on the property is something that's going to sustain how long and the age because you wanna plan for those costs. Check your HVAC systems, check the plumbing, get quotes on anything that you're unsure of. There could be poly B in the house and if that's something that doesn't sit right with you, then make sure that you actually get quotes to get that fixed. You're also gonna want to understand your utility costs. Know all of the numbers of what it's gonna cost you during the winter and during the summer and ask the seller for statements to help you understand a little bit of those numbers. Now, take all of these things from maintenance to ex like roof costs to plumbing to all of these costs and make a detailed list have that number and know what it is going into buying that property because that is really important. You do not want to be house poor because uh, it doesn't seem like a fun idea. So above all, stay organized. 
keep detailed records of everything that is happening so you know exactly what is going on and it's simple for you. The other thing is no one to walk away. If it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sit right with you, you don't have to buy it. Walk away from it. And truthfully, the tip 44 is have fun. I mean, you only get to buy so many homes in your life, so you might as well enjoy it. And so if this has been helpful, you can watch this video up here.